Namaskar. Do you feel that our governments, uh, governments all over the world today, are getting more and more powerful? Absorbing more and more power within themselves? Wanting to take more and more decisions about how you and I shall live and behave and act in society? Somehow this is very relevant in terms of the lessons that we have to learn from the corona crisis. The first of these lessons we shared in the video last week regarding dangerous work in laboratories which leads to pandemics. The lesson this week I propose is in favor of diversity and against centralization. The effect of this complete centralization, massive centralization, can be seen in the way the world has tried to combat the coronavirus pandemic. The entire world, with all its diverse civilizations, with all its diverse cultures and its diverse knowledge bases, and the way it looks at health, and the diverse ways in which it has treated health, they were all discarded, all rejected in favor of this one central method, which was being driven by three agencies in the US, the CDC, the FDA and the NIH. The WHO, which is supposed to represent the world, uh, was actually a poor and mere spectator who was just holding on to the tails of the US agencies. There are two problems with this approach. The first approach, of course, is that uh, like putting all your eggs in one basket kind of thing. If we leave everything to just one agency, and if that agency or the person or people running that agencies are inadequate, are incompetent, they make blunders, then that is felt and seen all over the world. That is one part of it. To which some people may counter, what if uh, these were the right decisions? Then that will help the world. To which I make my point number two, that centralization is per se fundamentally wrong because human beings who are part of nature are not created in some uniform way. This basic scientific fact, if it is seen and respected, is itself the best argument against centralization. The world uh, in, in, its, in its existential form, the way it has been uh, created, you know, with existential rules, is in favor of diversity. Diversity is a fact of nature. So many different climatic conditions, so many different weather patterns, cold regions, hot regions, warm regions, humid regions, different racial makeup of human beings all over the world, with different food habits, with different uh, uh, ecosystems of which they are a part, and which have shaped their biological, physiological makeup uh, over thousands of years. Modern science itself says, and I, I read this in fact from one of the max vaccine manufacturers, saying that, you know, after all, immunity varies from person to person. Forget different regions of the world, different races, uh, uh, you know, tropical and uh, temperate weathers. They are saying even in, a, in the same house, two people may have different levels of uh, immunity. And they are right. That part is true. And yet, we are going for a centralized approach with one uh, centralized idea of uh, approach and treatment to pandemic, with one uh, centralized uh, treatment, one centralized medicine, which is going to be jacked into 7 billion people on earth. Is that, does that sound like a solution which is in sync with the way we as organisms of this planet have evolved in our diverse ways? That is also, of course, a question of diversity of knowledge. In India, for instance, we have such a deep and vast study of herbal uh, medicines. We have more than 1500 um, pharmacological uh, uh, remedies uh, for the last thousand years made out of the plant world. We know for a fact um, uh, here, uh, culturally, that things work different in different people at different times and to different extents. This is one of the principles of our medicine. 
Similarly, I am sure there are others, you know, uh, other Asian civilizations. Uh, China, Japan, for instance, have their own uh, richness in the way they have seen health and medicine. So have places uh, in Africa, places in South America. Why not allow diversity and the diverse ways and the diverse knowledge bases that we have to thrive? Why liken the mistake we are doing in agriculture, uh, destroy biodiversity and have just two or three uh, varieties of seeds for all over the world? This point is very dear to me because I am sitting here in my farm and uh, I, I do organic natural farming and I know the destruction that has been caused by the same mentality, mentality of centralization and monoculturization. One solution fits all. This is the way we will do it. Of course, there is money involved. We know that. But that is not going to be discussed in this. You know, why centralization? We are saying this is a crucial lesson to learn. Lesson number two, therefore, uh, in this series on uh, the coronavirus pandemic is diversity, not centralization. Because the centralized authority uh, was in the US, obviously things, conditions, happenings, trends of the US was closest to those uh, agencies. And therefore, all the decisions they took, all the uh, uh, responses they gave were in, were in reaction to those which they saw closely happening within their own nation. And for such a response, which was uh, targeted at their own country, for it to be exported and used all over the world, uh, how much sense does that make? I will give you one specific example. Uh, America was hit differently and badly, you know, in the, during this coronavirus pandemic. At one time, if I am not mistaken, uh, they accounted, America accounted for more than 20% of the cases and deaths, nearly 25% at one point. The statistics keep evolving. Even though America has accounts for only 4% of the global population. So you have only 4% of the world in the USA, but you are accounting for 20 to 25% of the cases and deaths. Obviously, there is something unique to American society. Unique in the, in the, in the comorbidities that American patients who had coronavirus, uh, the comorbidities they exhibited. Obviously, there is something else to do with underlying health problems in the American population, all which is worthy of studying. But the centralization approach globally meant that the solutions they were uh, finding for their population because of their problems, unfortunately, unnecessarily, they were being implemented foolishly all over the world, including in India. To come back to the government issue, I sometimes feel that modern governments, governments all over the world, are today resembling more and more the church of the 15th century in Europe. The medieval church at that time had enormous powers within it. Uh, it would not let go of those powers. It wielded those powers quite draconianly, we are told, and it wanted to and did uh, control people's lives to a very large and suffocating extent. Is that any different today with the way our governments are behaving? In terms of the control they want in our lives, in terms of the decisions that they are making, even in terms of what we speak and do not speak, and they may even desire what we think and what we do not think. In the 15th century, there was this example of Copernicus who said that the earth was not the center of the universe. But the church, in its wisdom, said no, that is not true and we will not accept it. Today, there are so many uh, reports, scientific studies, data, empirical data, opinions, alternative opinions and questions coming out which have been put down. They have been taken out from social media. The powerful centralizing force of the government 
is in sync with the powerful centralizing force of corporations and the powerful centralizing force of tech companies. The new churches of the West. I think it's something we must think about. And before I uh, conclude a very important point, personally it's important to me. I use the word church in this video only in that very limited context of European history as it has been told to us. I am a religious man myself and I respect those uh, who also are religious and uh, who follow uh, whatever uh, method and system uh, they want to know themselves and to know the world. I do not believe that being liberal and being religious are, uh, what is the phrase, mutually exclusive. I don't think so at all. I think once we get rid of these, uh, of these mental barriers, then we can have an open look. Also encourage some of those enlightenment questions which have contributed well to the world. But also look at the great errors that have happened in following a system to such a level now that science has become the new church. Government has become the new church. Please think about all this and stay healthy, stay happy. Namaskar.